Hi folks, welcome to Cooking with Brian. Today we are going to make the best meatloaf on the planet. But the first thing you need is a cup of coffee. Because without coffee we ain't going to do much at all today. Live for God Studio Productions. This is Cooking with Brian, a cooking show with food that actually tastes great. For your ingredients, you will need two to three cans of whole peeled tomatoes. That's the large cans of whole peeled tomatoes. Doesn't matter what the brand is. You also need approximately 2.5 to 2.6 pounds of ground beef doesn't matter which kind you buy doesn't matter if it's 80 percent 90 percent 93 percent it don't matter friends but do not use deer burger friends because that stuff is disgusting so ground beef you can use ground chuck it don't matter as long as it came from a cow, we're not using buffalo meat or any of the other possum meats or any of the other nasty things that some of y'all do. Just want, you know, completely real hamburger from a cow, folks, not from any other animals. Some of y'all eat some disgusting things like raccoon meat, stuff like that. That stuff's disgusting, folks. So, we're going to make this recipe with ground beef. I don't even remember what the percent is. Probably like 80% because I was cheap. And that's just fine, folks. For your spices, you will need one real onion. Well, this is other ingredients too. One real onion one slice of bread, a little bit of syrup, maple syrup. The spices is onion powder, garlic powder, basil, and uh, oregano. Salt, maybe if you want to, a little bit of sugar is fine in there. So it's your call, folks. You do not have to put eggs in your meatloaf, folks. Put a little bit of syrup in there. That gives it the sticky texture you need to get it to clump together and stay together reasonably, folks. Okay, folks, here's how you make it. A bowl and mix it up by hand, or you can use a stand mixer, folks. Okay, folks, you want to go ahead and get you one to two slices of bread. We're going to use two. This is a good place to use those end slices that nobody likes to eat, folks. Very good place to do it. We're going to use two slices of bread today. You want to take it and kind of just flake it up. Flake it and break it. The smaller the pieces, the better. But it don't matter, it'll still, even in large pieces, it'll soak up a lot of the grease in your hamburger. Okay, we're just flaking this up. There's no right or wrong way to do it. You just try to break it up in as small a pieces as you can get it. You could use some sort of device that crumbs bread. But Brian is El Cheapo, penny pincher on some things, kind of cheap. However, I do have a stand mixer, but I didn't buy it. Could use a little cleaning. I might do that after I'm done here. Needs a little bit of cleaning done to it. Sometimes we lose patience when we're doing this. Okay, folks, then you want to take some salt. Put about eight dashes of salt in there. 
Okay, take you some oregano leaves. We put about six dashes of it in there. Basil leaves. About eight or ten dashes. Onion powder, you can kind of go a little heavier. We put about eight to ten dashes. Garlic powder. Just about three dashes of that in there. That should be fine. Okay, here's your chef's secret so that it sticks together good as you're mixing it. Some maple pancake syrup. Just take that. You ain't got to put a lot in there. Just some. Your disclaimers for the, today is everything good that happens is Brian's fault and everything bad that happens is your fault. Okay, folks, take you one peeled onion with the ends cut off. Carefully slice that. Don't cut yourself or it's your fault. If you cut yourself or burn yourself, it's always your fault, never Brian's fault. We're just dicing this sucker up. You can cut it as small as you want. It don't matter that much. Okay, we got that. Drew that, slap that in here in your meatloaf mixture. percent 80 20 3.69 pounds so it really depends on how big a family you're feeding and how big your appetite is but it's nice to have leftovers folks but we won't have any because we like to eat a lot at least I do slap all that in your pan here Okay, folks, it does not work good if your hamburger is is frozen. You want to make sure it's thawed out at least two days. You can mix it all up by hand, or you can use a stand mixer. Okay folks, then you want to get you a large, a large pan, deep dish, baking pan. You want to go ahead and spray your pan, that'll save you trouble later. Okay folks, then you want to take your already mixed up meatloaf mixture. You want to make one giant meatloaf. secret to the texture inside the meatloaf is based on how well you compact it by hand. You do not want it to be too thick in height because the thickness in your height is going to affect how well it cooks on the inside. If you like meatloaf that's nasty raw in the middle then make it real high that way it won't cook all the way in the middle but 
you're feeding it to other people, they don't like nasty raw meat like you do. Some of them do, but not all of them. Now you want to shape this the way you want. I'm just shaping it kind of like a meatloaf should look in my mind. You can shape it any way you want to. But the reason why that I'm doing it like I am, going across this way, is so I can fit potatoes around the ends. Okay, that kind of looks like a meatloaf to me, folks. Wash your hands. Next thing you want to do is get you a drink of coffee, folks. Okay folks, the next thing you need is some potatoes. You want to either use the red skin potatoes or gold potatoes because they have the same texture of skin that does not need peeled. You want to individually wash each potato before you do this and cut it into chunks without hurting yourself or others and then just toss it in your pan just like that folks now at the same time you want to Watch your potato to make sure you don't see any black spots in it like that one. We're going to remove the pieces that has black spots because it's pretty common in potatoes. It's always nice when you get some large potatoes in the bag. That way you don't have to cut as many of them up. Right now we're just filling in gaps here. You can cut the potatoes whatever size you like. It don't matter. However, bigger ones stand more of a chance of not getting cooked all the way. Okay folks, we're going to start with two cans of whole peeled tomatoes. You want to go ahead and drain those folks. Go ahead and drain the, the water out of it or juice. You can drink it if you like, that's fine. And 
we're going to start off with two cans just in case that we don't need three. But if you see that it's not coating everything well enough, we'll use a third can. You will need a blender for this function, folks. Go ahead and dump your two cans of drained whole peeled tomatoes. These can sizes are approximately 28 ounce cans. In case you needed to know that. Sometimes you may catch a spot of a bad tomato, so I picked that out. Okay, folks, you want to go ahead and put about three dashes of garlic powder, about five or six dashes of onion powder, four dashes of oregano, and about five dashes of basil leaves in there. Go ahead and run it. Okay, folks, then take your blended tomato stuff. Start out over the potatoes. You want to make sure everything gets covered because any potato that don't get covered will burn. Guarantee you. It may still burn a little bit, but that's fine. At least you did everything you could do. We're not pouring it on here to make sure it's filled all the way up. That's really what you're doing at the end. The main thing is is you got something on all your potatoes to make sure they don't burn. That's where we start. Whatever's left we're just going to dump over the meatloaf itself. At this point, when you look at this, you could add one more can of the tomato sauce in there, but I think that's good enough, folks. It'll give it the flavor you need. Okay, folks, if you want to save this to cook later and keep it in your fridge, that works just fine. That's, in fact, that's what I'm going to do right now. That way life will be easier tonight. For cooking dinner. Stupid cheap plastic. Don't ever buy cheap plastic. Okay, folks, and whenever you're ready to cook that. Okay, folks, and whenever you're ready to cook that, you want to preheat your oven to 425 degrees. You want to make sure you take the plastic off if you covered it up. Take the plastic off, oven preheated to 425, 
and you want to cook that for exactly 65 minutes. Carefully take it out and let it cool for at least 10 to 15 minutes before you serve it. And you will be tasting the best meatloaf that you ever tasted in your life. Guaranteed. Okay, folks. Hope that was a blessing to you. We'll see you next time. Bye, y'all.